Hello there everybody, it's Donna from Riverside Beads here and today I'm going to focus on macrame endings and starting your macrame. Um, so welcome, it will hopefully be a, a fairly short tutorial that will just finish some of the details that I've been talking about on the previous ones that we've done. So we've done some little mini series on these. We have so far covered um, basic square knot macrame, twisted square knot macrame, which was this one here. Um, different types of cord I'll, I'll just go through again today we did the double colored one last week as well so these should all be available on youtube and hopefully you can catch them back here on facebook as well so i'm the owner of riverside beads and we're a bead shop here in the uk um we are we've been going for nearly 20 years coming up this year in 2022 which is fabulous so it's really good to be able to bring um a wider audience now all the lovely things that we've been doing for many many years in the store and it's nice to be able to take them out and, and show them virtually as well now what i'm going to do today is just focus on starting it your measurements and then hopefully you can piece together from the the other tutorials that we've done we of course do lots of different macrame kits as well we've got particularly at the moment we've got one that covers four different styles of macrame and there's lots more tips and and layouts and different things that you need to know for those projects within that macrame boards and kits tend to start at the current prices from about i think it's about nine or ten pounds something like that and you can get a little starter pack up to about 30 pounds gets you a nice bundle of, of lots of things to make your board makes such a difference to your macrame it, it's got the nice light it's nice and lightweight it's got nice slots in that hold your cord in place and that makes such a difference to getting it out and and working your braid through now we'll go first through the starting now i personally i tend to work that way but if you had a smaller wrist that you were trying to do a project for you you know you could measure it up i could probably just get away with doing it that way across that side of the board i just tend to go down that way with it but you could turn it and go there so first off we'll talk about measuring now this um would be the same whether it was a, a bracelet necklace you can just sort of times up your measurement the first thing you need to do is get it long enough so if it was a necklace or a bracelet get it long enough to go round the recipient's wrist or neck or whatever it was you're making it for now with macrame if you're going to do it this way it has a slide knot fastening on it so it has this little mechanism here which opens and closes so there's no metal fastenings on this project and what you need to make sure is that you've got enough room to be able to have it round your wrist probably somewhere like that for me probably with a little two inch tail or something either end there and you would need to be able to open it wide enough so if i held it there and sort of imagine i was opening it and then i would need to be able to get that off of my wrist comfortably and work so for me something along those lines would would probably be okay and um, if you're making them to sell or or for people that you're not exactly sure on the wrist you better go in slightly bigger because it's adjustable and then they can make it fit so i could work that way but actually what i tend to do that's what i needed but i do tend to just go that little bit longer give me the, the space I need and, and pop it then I'll go the next one along so you can see so I would go somewhere like that and pop it into the cord so this is nice um, and easy to just slot in and then when I needed to I could just slot it out again um oh have I gone there okay so yeah I won't I won't put that one in because we've already obviously got one got one in there anyway okay so that's that that project there and um that's how to work it out now that's your um they refer to this as the lazy cord or, or we refer to it as that so that's the cord that we pin down into the board and then we work the macrame technique onto that the working cord we tend to go about three times the length of the lazy cord which then gives you enough to to do your braiding with this project here is the double colored one so if you're doing double colored like that you would go half and half so it'd be sort of three times the length of that lazy cord but one and a half times in one color one and a half times in another color as well and then we would tie those two colors together if um, I always then allow a little bit more because to tie the knot I'm going to take a couple of inches off there just probably probably about three inches just to get that tied so I would leave that little bit longer if I was you so just make sure you're generous enough three times is generally sufficient however you might want to go four times just to be sure um, it's quite tricky if you leave yourself short you can join macrame you could see a gap and, and you could use the process I'm going to show you today just to sort of put a bit of glue and join it. It's not quite going to be the same with braiding techniques. I really do prefer to get them done all in one go. If it's a bigger project, so something like a, um, 
see some some of the bigger projects as well have to be all in one piece as well they don't join very well but sometimes you can tie knots or you can seal them together um some of the cords will heat seal as well so you can add them in that way but you you ultimately will never give you that 100 percent smooth finish so it's better if you can have enough without wasting your cord and having too much so if you work on about three times um, but you can consider having a little bit more. The nice thing with these as well is the um, adjustable nature of them. So if you find that this top bit here, that's got an, an alphabet, it's got a name in it there. So if you find that this top section here ends at a particular, you know, a little bit smaller than you might want, you've then got this back section to work on that you could do a slightly larger back section. The other thing is the whole thing doesn't need to completely join it. This was a child's bracelet, so it was quite a small one. However, Molly is now bigger than she was when this was made, so she would probably need it a little bigger to fit her. So all you would do when it was on the wrist, you'd just see those little gaps there. And that's how you can make it adjust one. If you saw how I did that, that's how it adjusts down in size, and then you pull it like that. And it works as so. Now I did want to just show you the end fastening. To, I'll, I'll call it the fastening, but I wanted to just remind you how to do this part here on the back. Because this was the main braiding that we've been doing. And then I'm just going to show you that part. Now these have all been finished. Because of the nature of how a double coloured one is, you sort of tie it together. So then I've just untied it, just finished off a couple of knots either end. And now both these ends are going to need finishing. So they're ready for me to do for you in a moment. So that was the starting. I'll just talk briefly about the cords. Now, Macrami will work with any cords. Now, this one here that I keep showing you in the, the teal and the purple, that is a 1.5 millimeter um, Macrami cord, which is a, a nylon cord. Now, this one will melt. Um, you can do it with your thread zapper. Some people do it with open flames as well. Um, it, I don't tend to demo with that. Uh, that's for you to adjust, assess the safety of whether you want to do that. It's quite an, an interesting way to do it, but you need to be careful not to not to burn yourself. This one here is a cotton cord. This is double coloured again um, from the second series I did where I did the twisted one and showed it as a double colour. Now let's get that so you can just focus on that. Cotton cord is um, a slightly more natural cord. Um, so yes, it's, it's sort of a cotton, a dyed cotton based one. This one doesn't zap as well. So with the thread zapper that I'm going to show you in a minute, it's not as successful. It's much more successful on the nylon man-made kind of cords there, um, as opposed to a cotton cord. Ultimately, Macrami will work with anything. Very, very trendy with, um, real natural, um, put that here. Okay, I've not got it as a, a roll, but this is this is one that I did, um, a little feather, with a very natural kind of cotton yarn. Um, and this is a version of a macrame in the centre there as well. So, and, and this braids up lovely as a bracelet. Any of you that follow us on, on socials, my son has a bracelet that I kind of have to do a bit of macrame work on every now and again. It gets a bit dirty. And the middle bit in the, in the, the feature bit in the centre is, is okay. And I just replace all the cord for him. And I tend to use something like that. So the finished ones, that's the that's the two different finish. This one here's the nylon, this one here's the cotton cord. And these come up reversible. So when you flip them around, if I show you that one, you see you've got the dark pink with the light outer, and inside you've got the light pink with the dark outer. So that is those two there. Um, one of them works really well at the, the zapper finish, and the other one um, you would use the glue. I don't always have a battery in my zapper, as those of you that were here live before I started the actual tutorial side of it. Sometimes I'll go to it and think, oh, I forgot to put my battery in. Um, so I do find myself using glue an awful lot. I find I can get quite precise with the glue, but the zapper for this is absolutely fabulous. So we do have those at Riverside Beads. What I'm going to do is take this off of here, first off. And I will, um, I'll just warm up my zapper. So what I wanted to do first, oh, didn't drop my zapper, not a good idea. What I wanted to do first is, just bear with me, um, just show you where the battery side of it goes. So inside here, this is what all you do. You just put a little battery in there. Some of that, one battery in and turn that. And then that makes the mechanism work. So this is the, uh, I think this is the first of the, the zappers that they did. You have a little button here that you press and that just warms up, sorry, warms up the tip there. Have I pressed that right? 
yes it's all right you don't need to do too much with it it just does the job so bear with it and it will warm up i did just show um it was like you could see the tip getting getting warm previously i don't know if we'll be able to see that but hopefully it'll do the job for me let's see if it's warmed up yeah that's done okay probably got a bit of smoke from that as well okay let's see if i can see what the best way to show you this is Maybe it'd be better if that was under it. Hold on. Does it get it to focus on that? Is it going to play the game for us? Oh, goodness. Really? Why did it focus on things when I don't want them to? And then it won't when I do. There. Okay, right, let's see. I'm going to be able to do this and keep it in focus. Possibly not. We might have to just go with it okay so that's nice and warm and what we're going to do is just zap across there how clear can you see that sort of melting it away put that to one side yeah but there you go you just might have seen a little bit of smoke come and what that does is that just melts that in there so it's taken that edge off and melted the nylon for you just there. Now we'll do the same the other side. Bear with me. I'm trying to do it and not put my fingers in the way, but really what I'd like to be doing is holding on to that other piece of cord. If I can pull it off, no. So what I would have done was hold on to that cord with one hand, zap it through, but I think my fingers would have been in the way. Okay. So what I've got now is, put that there so I don't burn myself. Can you see it's sapped across there? So that seals the ends rather nicely for you. So that is how we would finish both ends of that. And I would do the same this other end as well. And then that would do that like that. Now that is then ready to go. You wouldn't need glue on that as well, as long as you've melted it. You're more than welcome to, but I want to do this end with glue so you can see what I do differently there. Now this is Hypo Cement. Hypo Cement is a very good strong jewellery glue. Um, different to your, um, it has the same similar properties to your E6000 glue, which is one that we use for Kamehimo. Um, and the difference, I'm just getting the little end of it. Does that come out? Okay, there we go. Good, you can see that little um, bubble coming out of the top of the glue. Um, difference with this one is it's a bit more liquid. Um, compared to the E6000. E6000 is a bit gloopier, which does work for this, but uh, it's just that little bit gloopier. You would want to use a little cocktail stick or something and sort of get it round. If you are just buying a glue specific from Aquamo, my preference would be this. Now that's what happens is I'm not squeezing this tube, but it decides it's got a life of its own and it's going to start coming out. I'm hoping this will allow me to show you where I'm going to put it. So I would go the same way as I did the zapper and I would go across there. So we've got plenty around there so i've gone along the top first i then flip it over and almost lift that out the way so i'm trying to this is all that's going to hold it in it's all that's going to hold that cord where it's exiting so under there like so so i've gone that's my cord i've gone under the cord that it's exiting and on top of the cord that it's exiting as well same here i'm going to go on top of the cord and under there where it would exit now the difference with glue and zapper it's um obviously instantaneous with the zapper it's there it zaps and it's sealed once it's cooled down that's it you don't need to do any more with this this glue i think officially takes hours if not overnight to dry so what you would need to do is glue all the ends that you wanted to glue you have to get this on before it decides to carry on coming out of the tube you have, to have your best eyes on to find the little bit to put that in like so, yeah, like that. It has to go inside the nozzle and that stops it gluing up too much. You do sometimes get a little bit of glue on. What I do is just twist that off first and that will keep that secure. I have these for years. Um, sometimes, you know, you roll them up like your toothpaste. Sometimes I end up cracking the thing and I can have had it years before it cracks and then starts to come out the bottom as well. Um, but I generally get to the point I've used all the glue. You can use it for Kamehameha as well. It's just a bit more liquidy. So if you were using it in an end cap, you would use an awful lot of it. But if you find you don't use it that much, it's a good way to get it used. But this one with the precision nozzle, nozzle, precision nozzle is perfect for adding little gems on, 
um, gluing, you know, real detailed work in your jewellery making as well. If somebody comes to us and they've got a gem missing out of a ring or something or a bit of dress jewellery, this is perfect for gluing that in too. So there you, there are your two different types of endings that you could do and the ways to secure them. So that one's been done with glue. So I'll give that a little pull now actually as well, which is the other thing you can do with glue. So I've coated it nicely, then I've given it a little pull just to tighten it, and that'll just make sure the glue goes all the way over there. When I cut this one, so when I cut it with the scissors, so I will get, I'll do it this end because I don't want to get glue on my nice scissors till it's dry, but I would cut it really nice and finely, close up, so it does look like that when it's gone. I would then put another drop of glue if I have it just to super seal it as such. Um, you wouldn't want to go in water, I guess, if you'd glued it. I'm guessing that one might be a little stronger for that. Not not tried and tested that method, but I'm thinking that could be the case. But it is really just dress jewellery. It's not something that you would you know, be able to secure to be able to wash up in things. So don't forget to do that. On the plus side, if you did, because you just wanted to wear something, I had a friendship one that, that you sort of didn't take off. And actually the idea was when it wore off, it was like a wish bracelet. So it took about a year to wear off. So when you wanted it to sort of, not, not wanted it to break off, but when it, you know, it, you wanted it to come off as such, um, it didn't. So I showered with it and everything. Um, so it did end up lasting longer than I, I thought really. Um, so yeah, that, that should glue on there. Then um, I've got the two ends. That I need to do the mechanism over so I just need to put that out of the way so it's not not getting hot everywhere I shall just move that I actually remove my battery which is why I probably keep coming to it and not having a battery in it I just feel it's safer just to have the battery it probably says do that at some point um so yeah I just I just tend to to keep that out of the way so I've took my battery out and I would store it or it's got a little lid that it comes with I would store it all away until I need it now for the fastening, so we're now making um, this bit here, this one here for example, this was the lazy cord that we were working on, this is the ends that I'd just finished, the equivalent on this bracelet there and there, this is a, um, I think I've glued that actually, just feeling, feeling what I've done there, yes it feels like glue. Um, and now I'm going to work on this mechanism. So I'm not going to particularly do the stitches too much, I just wanted to show you the principle of finishing it. Now what we do is wrap those two over, so we cross over to make like tram lines as such from those two and we go to the corner of one of our mats, one of our boards. This is a really useful way to do this because of this board, you slot them into the slots, give it a little push if you need to but that, that's fairly secure. You work out how long you want your mechanism to be, so if you needed it to be wider you would just make this patch as wide as you needed it here, but I tend to leave it, so I only need to do about an inch or so of braiding. Somewhere along those lines would be sufficient. And just push that in. Now, I don't like that crossed over, so I would probably try and manipulate those, take them out, get them, until I was happy. Now, I just will just say, I just caught myself on the glue um, there. I wouldn't normally do my glue in until I'd finished everything, so I would just leave all my ends for that reason. Um, I would leave all my ends ready to be glued or zapped and then do that all at the end. So that's good. I'm happy with that. Not crossed over now. Now I would make this workable for me as well. I like to braid down towards me. So you can see what I'm having to do there. Turn my board on the corner and have it so we've got that section there. Okay, so that is ready to go. Right, now I've got my double coloured, don't forget, as well. So I've already tied that together. The other thing you can do is melt these together. So you could just melt them with heat and it almost does become a seamless piece. Like I say, you'll never quite get it completely seamless. You will see a little joint in it, but that's that's the way to do it. You could sort of do it with your zapper, but you just warm up the end and before you'd warmed it and got it together, you probably need to put the two together and, and melt it. Now I'm going to pop that under there. I've got to put that in first. Let me put that under and then I'll reconnect that in. Okay. So pop that in there. under there somewhere about the middle although it's a bit tricky because of the limited space that I've got and then you would braid a section here just as we do don't forget you can watch a previous video if you're after more how to macrame braid it's a it's a different video you can sometimes see I'm picking it up with my nail sometimes it's really useful to just put something under there it can't be too big um it might be useful I don't know if that'd be too tall maybe might get in my way 
but just something to prop it up as such um, just gives you that that leverage to lift it under and go up through your D it just gives that that leverage to have that space but if not I just I quite like the process of Makami I find it quite quite therapeutic and I would just lift it as I go and just lift each each time I need a, a nice clear gap I don't have much to work with because I'm because I'm just doing a small section for the back and then with the with the double colour particularly you have two more lots of ends you have an end here to finish which we tie, untie that knot you can do that any time now I tend to leave it till the end and then you'll have an end the other side as well that will be for um that will need finishing where the two cords will exit I don't know how far I'll get it'll just take me a few more more stitches if that's all right just to do a few more so you can at least see it fully in principle um, I will just say, I think this is look rather than judgment, the, the, the double colour depends which side you start with, which side the colour comes, whether it comes into the inner or the out, outer of it. This happens to match, I think, which is, uh, I didn't consider that as I was quickly doing it to show you. But I think as the bracelet joins together, I think this will, will match. So I'll just do two or three more stitches. And then we can see. So my cord's far too big for this. I was just... Um, Setting a new bit up so it was big enough to show you how to start at the beginning as well. So Riverside Beads are a, a bead and craft store. Um, we have Riverside Crafts as well, based in Market Deep in Peterborough. So we're a shop that you can come into here in the UK. Um, and we're also an online store as well. And this um, lovely new programme that has been one of the positives of, of COVID has allowed us to, to reach out to, to customers. And I know some of the guys that watch us here are local still. Um, and it's just a new way to connect with everybody. We're back starting doing our classes as of 2022. So bear with us over the next week or so. And we will put that in our newsletters for you. So don't forget to subscribe to our newsletters if you don't already receive them. Because then we let you know what we're, what we're showing as a tutorial. Also what we've got as classes. So we've got a fabulous programme um, relaunching ready for this year. We cannot wait. So watch this space. That should be plenty for that. Um, struggling now with the space that I've got so if I needed a bit more space I would have left it a little bit more cord and gone wider or even right across here if we were trying to do a bigger section so that's fine now there'll be plenty that I'll be cutting off there now I'll take all of this out you just have to take care at this stage to make sure that you don't these ones here so these little bits that were your lazy cord that one and that one these, if you slid this through, there's nothing to stop that falling through at this stage. Now I'm just going to make this slightly smaller, and then what I'm going to do is you would either tie, and it's getting working out where all your cords are, so it's remembering which ones are your lazy cord. I'm going to tie a tiny little knot on the end of those, or a bead, whatever suits you. If it's a knot, you can just add a drop of glue and secure that. It's getting the right one main thing it's not getting the right one to tie it. it's getting the right one when you glue it and cut it so it's just making sure these are the mechanisms so then if I tie the I call it the mechanism if I tie a knot in those that's the bit that will pull in there and then except for all the chaos with all the cords you can see I could have done a little bit more to make that join up properly but you can see in principle that's sliding nicely through there so I've got my cord here, which is my bit that's going, it goes through. So you have to make sure even after you've glued that that will slide through there. I'll just do that bit for you a minute. We've got that one that we zapped. So that was fine. That was done. I'm not going to zap that end, although I'd quite like them out the way to show you. But um, because I've put glue on, it could ruin my zapper. You buy replacement tips for your zapper. Um, so you buy replacement bits of that. So as and when they get a bit gooed up or stop working or, or whatever, that's the replacement. But they're not too expensive. Um, and it is incredibly useful. Um, so I've done this mechanism bit so the next stage would be untying this side because that's the side we tied together at the beginning and then this all that will be a bit clearer where you're at with it so if you ever need to because of how you've tied this together if you just oh I could just do with a couple more knots to secure that you can actually use this cord that you tied together and use that in your in your braiding just get that undone right okay so nothing will unravel because all that was was hold in let's make it wider so you can see so remember I've put my knots in so nothing's going to slide through okay so we've got mechanism bit here that we've just done on the back of the board those ends and those ends and that's what we need to glue now so we would do the same technique and we'd glue all the way around 
So with the, I'll point with the scissors rather than get the glue back out again, but I would glue all around there. I would glue under there, so all around there. And then I would turn it over and I would sort of just add a little drop on there as well. Because otherwise this could slide back through there if it wasn't secure. Same this side here, come back around to the front, a little bit around there and under there as well. And then I would give it a little pull like we did with the glue or just zap it and it's done. Now, I suppose the benefit of zapping, it, it doesn't melt through particularly to the cord below. The glue, if you go over zealous with the glue, it can slip through onto the cord um, underneath. So if you do that, and then you need to make sure that your mechanism, after a little while, works through. So grab hold after you've glued it, and just make sure when you pull it through, and pull it back again, like that, that your glue hasn't seeped through. And because this is double coloured, it's that end and that end. If you remember, I just showed you the four that need doing. The other thing you can do is add a drop of glue on there, or zap this bit off, because you only need it as wide as the knots and you would set them at the widest part you need your bracelet to be to get over the person's wrist. So it doesn't matter if it's too big because then what we do is pull onto those and tighten it. I'm gonna show you on one that hasn't got all the ends on it just to, and that's one that fully matches up. So when it's finished piece, it's fully joined up. So it looks like just one bracelet. But then if I unslide that, this is one of my oldest pieces. It went in a magazine at least 10, 12, years ago something like that and I love it I both wear it and um oh thank you somebody just sent me stars on our Facebook live thank you <laughs> thank you Sean <laughs> um yeah so that's yeah that's that's there and when I pull on those that it because of its fits and it's the right amount of braiding on the top and the bottom this happens to be rather lovely and fits me and go like that pop it the widest it can go is a bit further out to the beads remember so it can be beads or little knots and then hold on to that funny one to do single-handedly but it's quite useful to hold on to that I tend to do it with my teeth if I'm honest but not if it's somebody else's bracelet I don't think they'll appreciate that um and that you see that joins up seamlessly then and that's your piece so that's your macrame braid and then all it does is just you just gotta work out where your ends are when it joins up as tight as that and then you slip it off so it's a really versatile um, braid macrame is and the macrame fastening that I've just shown you here is a really useful one on other types of braid as well so you can do it on kamahimo do your round kamahimo flat kamahimo whatever you fancy doing and then do this as a slide knot fastening if you don't want a natural fastener on it works really nicely on leather so you can make a leather necklace and do it this sort of fastening on the back there's loads of options for you there and that is your double colored macrame and that shows all of your fastenings and your endings. So I'm gonna start a mini series again on the seven braid Kumahimo. Um, I've got to miss next week for any of you that watches each week live. If you're watching this back on YouTube, that won't matter. Um, you may not see it, but there's no live next week, but we'll be back live um, the following week and we'll start our seven strand Kumahimo series for two or three demos as well. Lots of exciting demos coming up and I'm just trying to sort of specialise a bit more in all the detail that we sometimes need to see with them. So I hope that's everything you needed to see. Pop any questions um, in the comments and I'll pick them up. We tried to pick them up off YouTube and we pick them up off our Facebook as well. So we look forward to seeing you again some other time for another Riverside Beads tutorial. Thanks everybody.